<laughs> so, this is me. Five foot seven, ten and a half stone, and about to graduate with a degree in maths and drama. But I wasn't always this way. In fact, my story starts a couple of decades ago, in a modest terrace house, slap bang in the middle of a city. What the outside lacked in grandeur, the inside made up for in love. And there I grew up, with my mum and my dad. Back when my dad had hair. I was dedicated and continued to attend a church with my family, moving up through the ranks of creche and Sunday school, all the way to youth. And if someone were to ask me back then what made me a Christian, I would have responded, Well, I go to church, I, I, I pray a bit, Oh, I know every word of the hymn Jerusalem. And looking back on it, I was kind of an I Christian, TM copyright Apple Inc. I defined my faith through my actions. Really, I think it's all down to people wanting to be put into boxes. I wanted to be defined as a Christian, so I did what Christians do. But if I had my Sunday box, with its socks and sandals and leather-bound Bible. I also had my weekday box, with its go-go boots and feather boa. Oh, at school I was fabulous. Now, you're going to have to take my word on that, but really, I was. You know, I'd pirouette down the corridors, be spat at. Whereas, at church, I was quiet, sensible, dull. But one Monday night, at a church youth group, over a tray of custard creams and strawberry squash. I raised a question which would cause those two boxes to collide. I've got a friend, I said, a statement the group leaders no doubt found hard to believe. I've got a friend, and, well, and he's gay. Uh, what do I do? Silence. W well, one of them said. Uh, that's a very difficult subject, interrupted the leader. Now, the response he gave clouded my vision, the whole room blurred, and, and the gist of his response? Well, the gist of his response was a statement I'm sure you've all heard. It's fuelled debates, and it may have, just may have been a reason behind you watching this video today. And, and it's only six words long. You can't be gay and Christian. They recited texts recalled verses, he was an abomination, I was an abomination, the same six verses again and again, over and over, case closed. Now, I'd love to say I lashed out, I rebelled against my church and my family, made a stand for justice, but I'm too passive for that. Instead, I just sat and listened. I placed all their words inside my heart. Then, at night, I cried. Lots. I was slap bang in the middle of a group of people who despised my very existence. I couldn't change it. I tried. I, I prayed that I'd become straight. Every night for years I prayed, Lord, put me on the straight and narrow. But nothing was happening. The feelings grew more apparent and the tears kept flowing. Gradually, my Sunday box began to close. And I started to look elsewhere for my place in the world. The years which followed were dark. The internet became the place where I lived out my life with an alter ego. With him, I was free to be who I wanted to be. No one knew about it, no one at all. It became my dirty little secret, except this little space on the internet, this little space I thought was safe, was far from it. I rebounded from one hurtful relationship to the next, my heart broken again and again with no one. No one in the whole world to ease my burden and dry my tears. But eventually something altered. Something clicked. Just when life seemed its darkest, and it happened on a beach, in the middle of the night, a number of years ago. I'd been convinced to go on a church weekend away by my family and friends. The group were off playing sports, but I didn't really feel like playing rounders with a group of people who didn't approve of who I was. So I took myself away. And I sat. I sat amongst the pebbles, my head in my lap, just thinking. And I cried out. For the first time ever in my life, I cried out. I, I challenged God. I told him that if he really did exist, if everything was true about him creating the world, creating me, then he best blimmin' well make himself known. And as soon as the last syllable 
of the last word left my lips. Peace came. I opened my eyes and all I could see was black, the inky darkness of the beach I was on. But as my eyes adjusted, I saw something out on the horizon. A figure. Now you may call it a vision, you may call it a trick of the light, a figment of my imagination, an illusion, but what I saw there, there in that moment, was a figure who was waiting. He wasn't waiting for the tide to change so that he could come to me, but for me to just go to him. I was stunned into silence, my mind was racing, my heart was pounding, the sky was flooding with light and he was calling my name, my name, shouting about how much he loved me. At first, I couldn't listen, I, I, I didn't want to. For the past few years I was made to think that God hated me because I was gay, but here he was, and here he was speaking. He was proving them false, I kept saying over and over, it can't be true, because they all say, all those people playing blinking rounders, they all say. And he stopped me. There was silence. And then he spoke. It's not about them. It's about us. It's not about anyone else in the world. It's about you. And I. I listened. I thought. I cried. A lot. Again. But this time it was out of joy, not grief. My mind was filled with scripture saying how much I was loved. How much God cares for me. That night, that night I gave my life to Christ. You see, if you proclaim to be a Christian, it doesn't depend upon how often you frequent church, how much you pray, or whether you can recite Jerusalem. In fact, you can do absolutely nothing. Everything has already been done for you. Everything has been done some 2,000 years ago when God came to earth, was born in Bethlehem, lived for some 33 years and was crucified at Golgotha. And as he hung on that cross, the steel nails tearing his skin, the thorns piercing his head, the crowd mocking his life, he hung there for me. He hung there weighed down with everything I have ever done and everything I will ever do wrong. And he hung there for you. He hung there for everyone who believes in him. Then as proof he was greater than all the crimes we could ever possibly commit, he rose from the dead and sits in glory at the right hand of the Father. That's the crux of it. And yes, there are things in my life which had to change, but, but I didn't change them. Christ did. Christ working in me. He doesn't call the complete. He completes the broken. To this day I have scars from my past, but day by day they heal. They heal through worship. You see, for years I thought Christ would reject me because of all the hurt in my life, because of who I was. But I came to see that all that was really standing between me and Christ were the words of hate-filled preachers, well-meaning books and conservative ministers, which, had Christ himself not intervened, would have clouded my vision, muddied my mind and cost me my faith. But he broke through them. So I'm not going to let anyone tell me that I cannot be gay and Christian, because I have an inheritance, I have eternal life, and I have a saviour who loves me more than I could ever possibly fathom. Do I do stuff wrong? Do I mess up? Of course, who doesn't? That's why we need saving. I believe in a God who says, come as you are. It doesn't matter whether you are broken, whether you feel inadequate. He died for you. If there's people in a congregation that don't think I should be there, well, that's their issue. I'm there for Christ. I'm there for my brothers and sisters who walk by faith, live in grace and serve through mercy. He loves me. I, I really can't say that enough. He loves me. Is it easy? No. Am I always happy? No. Will it be worth it in the end? Yes. Twenty years ago, in that modest terrace house, I was born gay. Christ knew that before I did. My sexuality is just one part of who I am, and it belongs to the Lord. So, this is me. Five foot seven, ten and a half stone, and before my story even began, I was fabulous through Christ. Thank you.